Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Katie Blomquist. I am the Vice President of the Board of Directors with the Sex Workers Outreach Project. This is a self-care for sex workers mini webinar. So a little bit about me. I am a sex and relationship therapist at the Minnesota Sexual Health Institute. I provide therapy for couples and individuals struggling with a wide variety of mental health issues. So I see and treat lots of different issues, um, mostly sexual health issues, relationship issues, anxiety, depression, and trauma. I also offer a non-judgmental and informed perspective on sex worker specific issues, LGBTQIA issues, polyamory and open relationships, and unconventional sexual behaviors, including BDSM, kink, etc. So like I said, I currently serve as the Vice President of the Board for SWAP USA, and SWAP USA is a national social justice network dedicated to the fundamental human rights of people involved in the sex trade and their communities. So we really focus on outreach and education in order to um, really advocate for sex workers and one day end the violence and stigma. So why sex work specific self-care? I have found through my work with sex workers that the minority stress of sex work can contribute to burnout and compassion fatigue. And we also know that sex work stigma can impact people's identities, their relationships, and their physical health as well as their mental health. And we also know that sex workers are subject to higher rates of discrimination, violence, and rejection related to their work in the sex industry. And sex workers also receive more victim blame and less empathy if they experienced a sexual assault. So I find the minority stress model a really useful way of conceptualizing the stress that sex workers experience. Um, if you're not familiar with the minority stress model, it's used typically to explain um, higher levels of mental health issues and chronic stress, and as a result of that, um, chronic physical health issues that LGBTQ people experience. And that's not because of their identity, but it's because of how society treats them because of their identity, if that makes sense. Um, so on this slide, it says, just as an LGBT person's general psychological process is likely to reflect the way that they manage stigma, um, sex workers, too, struggle with stigma management and internalizing that stigma, as well as concealment and disclosure issues. Um, also, employment discrimination is really rampant, especially if someone has a record of arrest. And um, we know that navigating the legal system if an arrest occurs is incredibly stressful, um, but especially for sex workers because of the stigma attached to the work that they do. So with the minority stress model, um, Meyer 2003 talks about three internal stressors which can occur from experiences with rejection, prejudice, and discrimination. So applying this to the sex work population, this looks like identity concealment. So trying to pass as a non-sex worker and concealing the job from your friends, your family, your partners, um, and all of the stress that comes along with having to conceal a part of one's identity. Internalized stigma is also incredibly stressful. So that looks like beliefs around the idea of sex work not being real work or a quote, real job. And um, the last internal stressor is expectations of rejection. So if someone is anticipating that they'll be rejected, this may result in fewer close relationships with people. It can also result in difficulty in making new friends, being more likely to isolate, and generally being more on guard or being defensive. 
So we know that these internal stressors can be a result of sex work stigma. And we also know that chronic stress can lead to really negative mental and physical health outcomes. So because of all of this, it's really important for sex workers to engage in self-care practices, which look different for everyone, um, in order to mitigate the stress and to prevent burnout and to prevent compassion fatigue. Self-care is defined as looking after yourself. So it's essential to physical, emotional, and mental health. Self-care is defined as the ability to take care of your daily living needs. So that includes eating, sleeping, grooming. Um, but self-care is also about identifying your own unique needs and taking steps to meet them. So this means making time to do things that nurture you and engage in activities that keep you healthy. So like I said, self-care looks different for everyone, and it depends on a lot of factors, including the type of work or the type of sex work that you do. Um, but because of this, it can be really helpful to have self-care strategies that support and affirm um, the important emotional, physical, sexual, and intimate labor that sex workers provide. Compassion fatigue is described as the cost of caring for others who may be in emotional or physical pain. It's characterized by physical and emotional exhaustion and a change in someone's ability to feel empathy for their clients, their loved ones, or their coworkers. So if you're noticing you're feeling more cynical at work, you're no longer enjoying your work, um, you're feeling depressed, um, this could be a sign that you're experiencing burnout or compassion fatigue. And the most insidious part of compassion fatigue is that it typically attacks the very core of what brings a lot of people into sex work to begin with, which is their empathy and compassion for others. And there's a really nice handout on um, compassion fatigue and emotional and physical labor. And there's a link right here on goodtherapy.org. Some signs of compassion fatigue or burnout um, might include exhaustion, reduced ability to feel empathy, irritability, increased use of substances, dreading working with certain clients who maybe you typically enjoy seeing, a diminished sense of enjoyment of your work, um, heightened anxiety, intrusive imagery, or feeling like you're dissociating, um, and difficulty separating work life from your personal life. So it's essentially a shift from how you normally interact. Um, there is a compassion fatigue self-test that can be taken online to assess your own level of compassion fatigue. And this is the most effective screening tool to date. Um, and this test was not designed specifically for sex workers, but for helping professionals in general. So just note that it may not translate perfectly, but it is still relevant to the population. So there are lots of examples of basic self-care. Um, and these basic examples can be good at helping prevent compassion fatigue and burnout, but can also be helpful in addressing it if you're also feeling like this. Um, exercise is always my go-to, um, even though it can be the last thing <laughs> that someone is wanting to do if they're feeling burned out. Um, and exercise looks different for everyone, right? So exercise could be, I'm exhausted, so I'm going to watch Netflix and stretch, or I'm going to do Pilates while I watch Netflix, <laughs> or I'm going to go on a walk, or I'm going to ride a bike, or doing something to get your body moving. Connecting with others is also really helpful, especially connecting with people you can relate to. So having a support system of people who unconditionally support you, um, maybe other sex workers, maybe people who you're out to about your job. Um, eating a healthy meal or snack is a basic example of self-care, or even just taking a break. So either 
taking a day off or taking a couple of days off if you can afford it, um, but just removing yourself from the context can be really helpful. There is a list here, um, 134 activities to try for self-care. And this is really helpful to read over if you're feeling stressed. Um, it might be a sign that you need to change your physiological state if you're feeling um, compassion fatigue or burnout. And changing your physiological state is much easier to do than it sounds. So like I mentioned before, exercise is a great way to do this. Um, yoga, Pilates, cardio, these are all great ways to shift your mood and to take care of your physical body. If exercise sounds awful to you, <laughs> like I said before, you can also change your state by eating a snack, taking a bath, listening to music, um, petting a cat or an animal or engaging in self-focused sexual behavior, either solo or partnered in a non-work capacity. So with the sex workers that I see for therapy, I like to develop a compassion fatigue prevention toolkit with them. And I really encourage all people in the sex industry to design this toolkit for themselves that reflects their own reality and really takes into account their own life circumstances and work challenges because it's an individual process which looks different for everyone. So your self-care strategies that may work for you may not work for others and vice versa. So this is just a list of some key questions that you can ask yourself to begin the process of developing the self-care toolkit for yourself. So looking at what things you have control over, what things you don't have control over, what stress resiliency strategies can you use, um, are there ways that you can reduce stressors in your life, um, what are some relaxation methods that might work for you, and that can include meditation, yoga, breathing exercises, things like that. Um, and all of this information is adapted from this article right here called Running on Empty. So the full PDF is linked right here if you wanna read more on this. And I also like to create a go-to list for self-care activities with the people I work with in therapy. And this is really helpful for self-care to become a habit for people so that when you're in the middle of a really stressful life event, you can remember that, oh, I maybe need to take care of myself in this situation, and you just have this list ready to go. Um, so if something on your list isn't working, you can just check the list and switch to another. So fortunately, there are several pathways to self-care, and none of them need to be difficult or even take a lot of planning. Um, so I'm going to go over a couple of different options, but there's a nice long list on this article right here from Psychology Today, and that's the seven types of self-care activities for coping with stress. There are lots of different kinds of sensory options for self-care, and some of my favorites are snuggling under a blanket, sitting outside, taking a hot shower or a warm bath, cuddling with your pet, burning a scented candle, laying down and um, laying in the sun, or listening to music. There are lots of different pleasure options also, and these are going to really depend on what you find pleasurable. So um, if you like going out to eat, take yourself out to eat. If you like to watch a movie, lay down and do that. Um, journaling can be really helpful, especially for like organizing thoughts or venting feelings, things like that. Um, playing with pets is always a great idea or going outside and going for a walk. Um, mental options can be great, especially for people who struggle with anxiety or tend to ruminate or overthink things. So doing something physical as a distraction task can be really helpful. Um, cleaning out a junk drawer or a closet or scrubbing down the bathroom, 
um, doing something like that can be really nice and really distracting. And then you have a clean house at the end of it. Um, trying a new activity, doing a word search, reading something on a topic you wouldn't normally. So again, these are all just ways to distract yourself. Um, there are some good emotional options on this list, like practicing self-compassion, um, allowing yourself to express feelings authentically, so crying when you need to, laughing when you want to, and accepting your feelings. Um, but something that's not on this list is consulting with a therapist. Um, mental health professionals can be great for um, self-care and emotional support. Physical options are always good for managing stress. Um, and I mentioned most of these before, but sleeping is really, really important, especially if you're feeling stressed. So taking a nap or getting on a regular sleep schedule, um, in addition to trying yoga or stretching or just going for a walk can all be really, really great options. And lastly, um, connecting with other people is an important part of self-care, especially for sex workers, um, as sex workers tend to be more isolated and have smaller support systems, mostly due to the minority stress and stigma of sex work. So social options can mean going on a lunch date, calling a friend, joining a support group, um, but it can also mean that remembering that others are going through similar experiences and difficulties as we do is a thing um, and that we're not alone. So social media and sex worker specific online groups um, like on Twitter and Facebook, etc., can be really, really helpful as well. So like I said, this is going to be a very brief webinar and this is my last slide. So thank you so much for watching. If you want more resources, um, feel free to visit the Swap USA website. And I'm currently in the process of developing a pros network training for mental health professionals. So in 2018, I'm hoping to have a directory of sex worker affirmative therapists up on the Swap USA website. Um, so stay tuned for that. Um, and if you have any questions or comments about this webinar, feel free to send me an email. Um, my email is katie at swapusa.org. Thanks so much. Bye.